with Charlotte Strupatma. We begin in Lithuania, where NATO leaders are meeting this morning. They're setting for the summit in Eastern Europe, close to the Russia and Ukraine border, serving as a reminder for those attending of why the NATO alliance exists and why it is still relevant. Now, in a few hours' time, President Biden will meet with Ukraine's Vladimir Zelensky as the summit gets underway. Well, let's begin our coverage with Lewis von Jones on the geography of this summit. Russia annexed Crimea in 2014 and last year launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. On top of that, ties have been steadily growing between Russia and its key ally, Belarus. In response, NATO members on what allies call its eastern flank have become increasingly concerned. Among them is Lithuania, host of this summit. It's only a three-hour drive from Vilnius to the Belarus capital, Minsk. Russia is also close and the Russian territory of Kaliningrad, which has great strategic importance to Moscow. It hosts part of the Russian Navy. There are eight NATO members making up the eastern flank of the alliance. They stretch from the Baltic to the Black Sea. Lithuania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Poland, Latvia and Estonia. All of these countries have seen a significantly increased NATO presence. NATO's deterrent strength lies in its collective nature, Article 5 of its founding treaty says an attack against one ally is considered an attack against all. There are a billion people being protected by this agreement, with 31 member countries, most recently Finland, which formally joined this year, and Sweden, not yet a member, but hoping its accession will be ratified soon. Well, that is the roadmap, as it were, to this summit, with events to the east in Ukraine and in Russia at the forefront of everyone's mind. OK, so that was my colleague Louis um, von Jones on the geography of NATO members. We can go straight now to Vilnius, where the summit is taking place, and our diplomatic correspondent, James Landale. Uh, James, it's interesting because we've been hearing reports about how the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, wants to talk about increasing defence spending at this summit. Um, how will that go down, given you know, we've got a cost of living crisis going on across Europe, across the US as well? Well, I think it's a brutal reality that all governments within the NATO alliance are facing. What the war in Ukraine has shown, the Prime Minister is saying, is that the West isn't spending enough on defence because uh, if the West wants to support its principles of defence of sovereignty and territorial integrity, that means it requires a lot of military kit and hardware and ammunition that has, has been given to Ukraine. It has shown, the Prime Minister says, just how low those stocks are. So what he's saying is at the moment... NATO members, NATO allies have a broad ambition of saying let's spend about 2% of national wealth on defence. Um, the problem is, is that uh, most countries don't actually meet that target. Currently, I think it's only about seven countries, including, uh, you know, the United Kingdom. But some big countries, you know, like the French and the Germans, they don't meet that target. So I think what the Prime Minister is saying, let's turn that, that target not into a broad ambition, but a basic minimum, so that countries can build up their industrial bases to, to make military hardware, not just tanks and things, but also the basic things like shells that uh, Ukraine needs for its artillery to try and get that process going. But clearly, as you say, it is a, a choice about priorities, but that is what politics is about. And James, Sweden has been given the green light. What does that actually mean for Ukraine's membership, if it means anything at all? Well, I think what it does is the fact that uh, the Turks have withheld, have finally given their consent to Sweden becoming a member. What that means is it means that a sort of distraction uh, has been taken off the table here at this summit. Because if the, this summit had been dominated by a row over the Turks continuing to haggle over various things, um, that would have distracted from the broader aim of this, of this summit, which is to put on a show of unity. What NATO hopes to do is to send a signal to Russia that it's united, that it is resolved to support Ukraine for the long term. Uh, and any kind of row over Sweden and when it's going to join, I think, would have been a distraction for that. What that doesn't, though, do is resolve the differences within the alliance over precisely how fast they sh it should go in welcoming Ukraine 
uh, into its ranks. Some countries want there to be a faster track, other countries are more cautious saying no, let's leave that to a post-war scenario. And that's a discussion we're going to see played out in the coming days. James, thank you very much for that update and analysis. That's our diplomatic correspondent in Vilnius on there for us um, on the NATO summit. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.